to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the scripture says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. How can a person know that this book is from God? Can we be sure that every word of the Bible is inspired from the mouth of God? And how does that apply to my everyday life and to yours? We're so glad that you joined us today for our study of the inspiration of Scripture. We hope that you'll find your Bible and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study today. Today's lesson is being brought to you by members and individual congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You'd be an honored guest at any of their services. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the church or the plan of salvation, you'll find friendly people there who are concerned about men and women's souls and who want to help people grow closer to God. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? From there, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study materials. We have written material, questions and answers. We have audio and video lessons available, and it's all available free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson in CD or DVD form or a digital download, you can go to our website, fill out a media request form, and we'll be happy to make that available to you free of charge. And friend, we encourage you as well in today's fast-paced world to check out the Gospel of Christ app available on both the Android and the, Google, and the uh, Apple Play Store, Apple Store as well. As we think today, about the marvelous subject of the inspiration of Scripture, we're going to notice why this is so important, and we're going to look a little bit at the Bible's claim. The Bible tells us that it is inspired of God. And so let's think about for just a moment why this subject, why is it important that we think about and study the inspiration of Scripture? Let me present these ideas to you. First, studying the inspiration of Scripture is extremely important because there are many people who just think of the Bible as a good book of moral or religious suggestions. That is, it's a good idea, something good to follow, but is it really the divine will of God that men and women must keep? There's a lot of people who would say no to that. Friend, I want you to think about a few passages with me. In John chapter 6, Jesus made some hard statements. He told his disciples uh, to eat his flesh and drink his blood, which figuratively Jesus was just saying, bring my life and teaching into your life also. But that was hard. And the Bible says that, that some of Jesus' disciples walked with him no more. Jesus then turned to the rest and said, Do you want to go away also? And Peter spoke up and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of life. Friend, the Bible teaches that the words of this book are words of life, knowing how to live life to the best of our ability and to live the best life. John 10, verse 10, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. But more than just the idea that the Bible is the words of life, let's also realize that this is not a book just of good suggestions. This book, the Bible teaches, God teaches, is going to be our ultimate judge. 
In John 12, verse 48, Jesus said this, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Friend, this is not just a good idea, not just good suggestions. These are the very words of God that are going to judge each and every one of us. But then I want you to think about this with me. <clears throat> Why is the subject of the inspiration of the Bible so important to us? Friend, let's realize that our world is full of evolution and humanism. Those ideas are being taught in our schools. And friend, the inspiration of the Bible, if it's true, clearly teaches those ideas are not true. Is it the case that man somehow evolved out of nothing? Well, listen to what the Bible says. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Friend, the Bible's claim is that God created everything out of nothing, supernaturally. God made the world that we now live in. Psalm 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, the earth and everything in it is His handiwork. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 clearly teaches us that we are the handiwork, we are God's creation, and that this world is not about evolution and humanism and what can man get out of it. Rather, we're made in the image of God to serve and to glorify Him. And that's why the inspiration of the Bible is so important. And then think about this with me. Why is inspiration so important? Friend, there is so much religious skepticism today. There are men who claim that we've got to follow this idea, others who claim that maybe this is right or that's right, and there's so much confusion and skepticism. Friend, a good dose, a good understanding of Bible inspiration will do away with all the skepticism, all the doubt, and all the confusion. What we really need to be asking is, if we understand Bible inspiration, we need to be asking two great questions. Jeremiah 37, 17. Is there any word from the Lord? If this book is from God, then all the rest of it is not what we need to be looking at. What does the Bible say? Or as Paul put it in Romans 4, verse 3, what does the Scripture say? Those are the two premier questions. But friend, I want you to also think about this with me for just a moment. Why is Bible inspiration so important? Friend, if this book is not from God, if this is not God-breathed and every word from the mouth of God, then everything we're doing as it relates to that is in vain. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 14, if there's no resurrection of all people, we're the most pitiable. And friend, we could say the exact same thing about the Bible. If this book is not the Word of God, then Christians are the most pitiable people in all the world. And yet, the Bible's claim is that this is truth and this is from God. John 17, 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Psalm 19, 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, complete, converting the soul and making men wise unto salvation. But then also, let's consider this. Why is it so extremely important that we understand and study about the inspiration of the Scripture? Friend, this book, the Bible, the Word of God, demands that we prove all things. It isn't enough to say, I think, or possibly, or maybe, or our best. No, that won't work. The Bible demands that we prove things. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21. The Bible says, Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, we, uh, Christ, or 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, we walk by faith 
and not by sight. Our faith is our obedient trust in the Word of God. You see, faith is not just something better felt than told. It's not a, a leap out into the dark. Hebrews 11.1 1 says faith is based on substance and faith is based on evidence. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. 1 Peter 3.15 says this of Christians, Be ready always to give a reason defense for the hope that is within you. Our hope is built on this being the Word of God. Can we defend that? And can we prove it as God's people? And so let's think for just a few moments about what the Bible claims. And then in this series of lessons, in the next few lessons, we're going to show from the Scripture and from evidence that this book is indeed the Word of God. But what does it claim? What is the Bible's claim to inspiration? Let's look at a few passages together today. I want to show you from the Scripture that this book claims to be the very Word from the mouth of God. Would you open your Bible to 2 Timothy 3? And I want you to look with me in verses 16 and 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. How much Scripture? Listen to this now. All. Not some, not most, not the passages and principles that are easy to follow. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Well, how did that process happen? I want you to notice 2 Peter 1, verses 19 through 21. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved or guided by the Holy Spirit. How did inspiration happen? Friend, God used the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God worked within men and the final product of what they wrote down in the New Testament was the very Word of God, guided by and used by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. Friend, I want you to think about another passage as we think about the claim of inspiration. What does the Bible claim about its own inspiration? Listen to what Paul said. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37, If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge, notice this now, the things which we write to you, these are the very commands of God. When Paul wrote, whose product was the end result of that? Whose commands were those? What was the letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians or to the Thessalonians or to Ephesus or Colossae or Galatia, any of those, the end product, what was that considered by God? These are the very commands of God. You see, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2.13, these things we also speak, not in words which human wisdom speaks, but words which the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit spoke through men of God in the first century and what they spoke and what they wrote. The end product, the Bible claims, is the very Word of God. And friend, when you put all that together, you have the complete, full will of Almighty God. How do we know that? This is what Psalm 119, verse 160 says. The entirety of of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. But let's take just a moment, and let's break down a little further what we mean, what the Bible means by inspiration. Think about that passage with me in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. All Scripture is given, listen to this, by inspiration of God. What does inspiration mean? You know, some people say that it, it's kind of like with Shakespeare. Shakespeare was inspired to write his plays and things like that, and that's the kind of, ins no, that's really not, the uh, inspiration is not motivation necessarily. He was motivated, he was compelled, no, 
Inspiration is different than that in the Bible. The Greek word for inspiration is the word, is a compound word of two words, really. It's the word theopanoustos, and that's two words in the Greek language. It is the word theos for God, and then a really unique word, panoustos, which means literally to exhale. And so when we say the Bible is inspired, we're saying that God exhaled. Breath came out of God's mouth, and what was on it was His very Word. That's such a beautiful picture. Uh, when we say the Bible is God-breathed, that's the idea of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. But consider this also with me. When we say the Bible is inspired of God, not only are we saying that it's God-breathed, but that it's also full and complete. That is, it's everything a person needs to be right with God. Notice this passage with me. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. I want you to look at this in your Bible. Here's what we mean by the fullness of God's Word. As His divine power has given to us, notice this now, all things. All things for what? That pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Friend, when we talk about inspiration, God's given us all things for life and godliness in the pages of the Bible. The Bible is everything we need. I don't need a, all the books of men. I don't need a, a popular opinion poll. I don't need to know what some religious leader somewhere thinks he knows. The Bible alone. Listen to this now. The Bible alone is everything I need for life and godliness. I want you to hear what Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, 13 about this idea and what the Holy Spirit was going to do for them. Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. You'll not speak on your own authority, whatever he, he hears, he'll speak, and he'll tell you things to come. Listen to that now. When the Spirit has come, and he promised he would come upon the disciples, Jesus promised it in Luke 24. It happened in Acts chapter 2, and through the first century, they wrote the Bible. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, listen to this, he'll guide you into all truth. Friend, the Bible is all truth. But then let's put this nuance with the inspiration of Scripture as well. Not only is it God-breathed, not only is it full and complete, all truth, but God used words to give us the Bible. God didn't draw you a picture, and God didn't send you a video. God used language. He used human words to get us the Bible. So here's the idea of inspiration. This is such a beautiful picture. Listen to this verse. 2 Samuel 23, 2. David said this. His word was on my tongue. When Paul wrote, or when Matthew wrote, or when Peter stood up in Acts chapter 2 and preached, whose word was on their tongue? God's word, David said in 2 Samuel 23, 2. And then do you remember 1 Corinthians 2, 13? Paul said, these things we also speak, watch this now, not in words which human wisdom speaks, but which the Holy Spirit speaks. Friend, God chose words, and they're important. And this is a big part of Bible inspiration. I don't want to know, I don't want a version or a Bible that uh, takes the words of God and gives me what they think God's idea is. No, I want the words. The original Word of God, as close as I can get, and the equivalent English uh, Word as well. And so that's an important part of God's view of inspiration. But friend, consider this also. Another idea as it relates to defining inspiration is that this book is infallible. That is, it is not full of errors. It does not contain mistruths. It is perfect complete. James 1 verse 25 
The Bible says that the Word of God is complete. The law of the Lord is complete. Psalm 19, verse 7, uh, God's Word is perfect or complete in every way. And friend, that goes right along with what the Lord said. Praying to the Father, Jesus said this, Sanctify them, set them apart by your truth. Now listen to this. Your word is truth. Friend, when you think about this book, the Bible, let's realize this is absolute truth. This book's infallible. It's perfect. It was given to us by a perfect God who cannot lie, uh, who does not change, Malachi 3, verse 6, Titus verse, chapter 1, verse 2, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. And that's so encouraging as we look to the Bible's claim to inspiration. But then there's one final idea that we want to add to the Bible's claim to inspiration. Not only is this book breathed out by the mouth of God, not only is it full and complete, it has everything we need for life and godliness. It's found contained in words which men spoke. It's full truth and infallible. Friend, this book is authoritative. That is, it settles the matter. It's the final word on all matters pertaining to religion. And friend, my responsibility is to submit to and obey it. Again, listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse number 48. Jesus said, He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Revelation 20, verses 12 through 15 presents that great throne room seam of God where men and women, the dead, small and great, are going to be judged. Listen to this. And books were opened. And another book is opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the things written therein. What's the standard of judgment? Jesus said His Word was going to be that standard. And this is our authority. Again, do you remember what Paul said? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 37, if anyone thinks himself to be a, a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge, listen to this now, the things that I write to you, these are the commandments of God. Friend, the Bible is God's commands for me and you. The Bible is God's message of love and hope of His grace and His mercy, but the things God tells me to do, those are things He expects me to do as well. And so when you think of the Bible, wow, what a unique book it really is. The Bible is the most unique book ever made. It contains a compilation of 66 different letters or epistles or, or books. It was written over a period of about 1,500 years by 40 different writers or authors. Many of them were from uh, different countries. A lot of them spoke different languages. They were of different trades. It is the no most unique compilation ever. But here's what's amazing. On every subject, although many didn't even know each other, lived in different parts of the country, on every subject, they all say the same thing. Can you imagine men trying to do that today without the idea of inspiration? You take one book, just pick any subject, medical book, engineering book, whatever it may be. Over 1,500 years, you get 40 different writers, uh, combine that into uh, different languages, and you are not going to get the same thing on every subject, much alone any subject, and yet on the Bible, in the Bible. That's exactly the way it's written. That's the, because the Holy Spirit of God is the driving force behind that. Friend, the Bible is the most unique book ever, and it's the most popular book ever. 
It is the most popular book that man has ever had. It's changed more lives, done more good, shaped society, helped cultures in every way to live the best life possible. But friend, today, we want to ask you even a more important question. Has the Bible changed your life? Have you submitted your life to the will of God, to His divine word and His divine teaching. Friend, are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the message of the New Testament? That message is such a powerful and beautiful message. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you put your faith and obedience into Jesus Christ? Have you done what Jesus said to be saved? Jesus clearly taught us we must believe He's the Son of God. John chapter 8, verse 24, Unless you believe that I am He, Jesus said, you'll surely die in your sins. Have you put your faith in Christ? Have you turned from a life of sin to God in repentance? Luke 13, verse 3, Jesus said, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Having repented of sin and turned to God, have you made that great confession? I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what the Ethiopian eunuch said in Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. And friend, having done those things, have you been immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins and to be saved? You know, Jesus made it so plain. Here's what he said. Mark 16, verse 16. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Jesus clearly taught you've got to believe and be baptized to be saved. And so we want to encourage you, if you haven't done that, to do that today. And please join us next time as we're going to study more about the inspiration of Scripture. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the